Oh, what's up guys? Today we are talking about HMS. Um, I've gotten requests to talk about this system on my channel for a while now, and I haven't, mostly because I don't have that many of these. Um, and we'll talk about why that is, but I have maybe like five HMS. I've got like the Three Kingdoms stuff, which I got at um, Beyblade West Coast. Shout out Shindog. I've got uh, Dragoon MS, and I've got uh, Drasil MS. I used to have a lot more way back in the day, but I ended up selling them all. Kind of wish I hadn't at this point because like they've gotten stupid expensive. But HMS is technically part of Plastic Gen. You can argue whether or not it's like legitimately part of the same generation since it's a completely different system. It was shoehorned into the anime, and I think that's the only reason it's considered part of Plastic Gen. Um, it's a completely different system. It's nothing like the the previous iterations. Um, they're significantly smaller, their design is completely different, system's completely different, nothing's cross-compatible. Um, much more in line with something like Metal Fight. So you've got your bit chip, you've got your attack ring, you've got your weight disc, and you've got your running core tip, whatever you want to call it, RC. And um, you could definitely see like where some of the inspiration from X is coming together. Um, it's very similar sort of set up where you've got sort of like the uh, attack ring and then you've got the disc and then you've got the, the tip. Um, I would say X looks, to me, looks pretty similar to HMS as far as like the actual system goes. I mean, obviously there's no bursting with HMS unless this breaks, but, um, <laughs> which is an issue. So um, the fragility issues with HMS usually boil down to these two parts right here. So the running core had these tabs on them. These can break. And then the bit chip, not a very thick connector, so face bolts definitely were an upgrade. Um, these can break, and replacing these is not easy. You can't just buy these. So you either have to buy another HMS Beyblade, or like you would have to go like the 3D print route, which is what a lot of people are doing now. Uh, there's a lot of 3D printing happening in HMS with the running cores and the bit chips, uh, just because like they're they're pretty prone to breaking. So. Uh, like this one's this one's pretty loose uh, whereas these like I can't really move it as easily they're supposed to be pretty tight so I don't know this one might break at some point who knows but yeah for the most part these are HMS is not um, a, a cheap system to get into these are the three kingdoms HMS these are these are pretty cheap there are some cheap options on um, AliExpress but um, outside of uh, outside of the four or five things that they have, everything is, is fairly expensive. Like Dragoon MS goes for, yeah, depending on condition, anywhere from 50 to 100. Um, Drigger MS, also around $40, $50 mark. Uh, you've got um, pretty much all of the rarer stuff, you know, uh, Fox, Bloody Devil MS. Um, a lot of the other releases are, tend to be significantly more expensive, like hundreds, uh, Bloody Devil MS, like a thousand. A lot of a lot of the more uncommon stuff, especially the random booster stuff, uh, tends to be five hundred dollars, anywhere between five hundred and thousand dollars, which is crazy. Um, that's why I don't have a lot of it. It's just it's just too expensive. Um, it's a cool system, but it's just it's way too expensive, and. Um, the, the, the fragility issues with these bit chips and the cores and stuff make it really hard to invest that amount of money into a single Beyblade with the potential that it breaks. So you can play competitively with the like AliExpress stuff. So if that's what you're into, then no problem. And you, like I said, you can get a Dragoon for the rubber, the rubber core fairly inexpensively. Um, but you're not gonna you're not gonna get a wide variety as far as selection goes with these. And um, yeah, HMS was not a commercial success. It didn't do great in Japan. Uh, it didn't do great in America. It was shoehorned in at the end of the Plastic Generation anime. So it's technically part of Plastic Gen, but uh, it's just a completely different system. And uh, people didn't really care for it. Uh, it. It isolated, you know, all of the other releases where nothing was, you know, cross compatible. Plastic Gen up to that point had done a really good job of making sure everything was pretty much interchangeable. So like, and everything was fairly balanced as well. So this is a complete divergent from what had been released previously. 
which is fine. It's good to progress and to change up the system, but if you end, if you end the anime and the manga and all of that, then there's really nothing to push the to push the product anymore, especially when your target audience is kids. But the uh, the launchers also feel really good. They're probably the best feeling ripcord launchers. They're super, super smooth. They're also left and right spin. And they're just good. They're my, definitely my favorite ripcord launchers. They feel so nice to use. It doesn't help that like, you know, these are really dense, so there's a lot of power going behind these, um, which doesn't help the, the fragility issue with the cores and the bit chip when that little thin piece of plastic is what's holding it together. But if you, if you like that metal clink clink sound and you want to try something new, like I said, the AliExpress stuff is fairly inexpensive. But yeah, I just wanted to make a quick video and kind of talk about why um, why I don't make content on it. It's because it's, it's just really expensive. It's really expensive and it's really uh, really fragile. You know, this is the, the the bit chip is definitely the worst design part on the on these. It's just I mean you can see how thin this is. It's just uh, not the best thought out way to connect these, I don't feel like. That's pretty much it guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the system. Uh, if you're familiar with it, if you've ever played with it, I know, um, you know a good chunk of my audience is from Classic Gen era. So if you guys remember picking these up, what were your thoughts on them? I remember when I picked them up, I was like, what is this? Why are they so tiny? They're like the size of like a half dollar or something. Uh, they're just, they're not very big. Doesn't mean they're not good, but when, when we went all the way up to like Dragoon GT, which is fairly big, and then we just scaled all the way back to this, I was like, what the heck is this? You know, it's 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 hard, hard to introduce a new system, but tie it into the old one, because it, it feels like a step backwards. It's at this point, like we're used to, you know, every generation they reset the power scaling, but this felt like too much of a, a divergent from what I was used to as a kid. And it just, to me at the time, I didn't enjoy playing with these as much. I didn't enjoy piecing them together. It took longer. Uh, I felt like there was less options. It just, uh, it just wasn't for me. Um, nowadays, I enjoy HMS, but not to a point where I'm willing to spend hundreds of, you know, if not thousands of dollars to um, try to get a, a wide variety of these to actually play with or make content with so yeah that's it uh interested to know your guys' thoughts down below